You're watching a free sample video from Teacher's Test Prep. For videos like this one covering every area of your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com. The Mongols. The Mongolians are a uh, pastoral nomadic tribe or group. Basically a tribe of people who would um, live off of the products of their, their domesticated animals and move from place to place according to the seasons and needs of those animals. Now, ironically enough in uh, history, the Mongols are able to create and conquer the greatest lamb empire in all of world history. Uh, they did this under their most famous leader, the uh, Genghis Khan. Now, what allowed them to, as you can see on this slide, uh, conquer China, then Persia, then Russia in such quick succession under Genghis Khan's uh, rule was their very unique military strategy and their unique military ability. Every Mongolian uh, man was expected to be able to ride a horse, uh, sit and stand in a stirrups saddle, and be able to pull with accuracy uh, a uh, bow and ar arrow. <clears throat> Using this mounted cavalry, uh, the, the Mongols were able to rapidly um, conquer vast areas. They also were really good with psychological strategy as well as the first to use um, biological warfare. The psychological strategy was um, very much a submit and live or resist and die. And their military uh, prowess was such that many towns feared it and surrendered almost immediately. The other method that they used was to take biological warfare. They took infested blankets um, and other materials and would uh, infested with the Black Plague uh, blankets and other materials and catapult them into cities that they laid siege to. Now, um, Genghis Khan's rule ends in 1227. However, um, the Mongols continue to expand a unified empire until 1260. And this is, uh, has to do with the very specific method of uh, inheritance in Mongolian um, power structure. It is not automatic that the oldest son of the ruler, in the case of Genghis, in, the, in this case Genghis Khan, would automatically uh, become the next Khan. Uh, instead, uh, Mongolian tradition is that the oldest and uh, strongest, as in when we say strongest we mean proven in battle, in Mongolian battle. Um, the oldest and strongest uh, next living male relative of the ruler would inherit. And in this way, uh, Genghis Khan's brothers and sons ruled in succession until 1260. Uh, and at that point, uh, we run out of Genghis Khan's sons. The, the confusion in the next line of inheritance had to be with, should the next oldest, sorry, excuse me, the oldest grandson be the ruler or the oldest son of the oldest son be the next ruler because all of them were proven in battle and capable and they were not necessarily the same um, person. Instead of allow infighting and rivalry to destroy this hard-won empire, um, the grandsons of Genghis Khan relatively peacefully divided up the Mongolian Empire. Um, the most powerful and uh, greatest borders belonged to the Great Khan in China. This would be Kublai Khan. Um, the next would be the Il Khanate, which essentially took over the lands of the Middle East, Mongolian lands of the Middle East. Uh, then there was the Golden Horde. Uh, these were the Mongolian lands uh, in Russia. And then last but not least, there was the Kingdom of the Jagadai, which is essentially the homeland of the Mongolians. And so the division of the Mongolian Empire allowed for a peaceful transition, if you will. Now, if you look at this map, the thick line indicates the extent of the empire after the death of Genghis Khan. The individual divisions are noted within that boundary. Um, the, uh, the, one of the 
innovations that actually comes from the Mongolians is the concept of the passport. Now, the reason they created this passport was so that um, merchants and travelers who wish to travel along the Silk Road, which the Mongolians were able to reunify within their um, empire and then subsequent friendly um, kingdoms, uh, this allowed for travelers along the Silk Road to travel through each of those four kingdoms if necessary or the multiple kingdoms in order to um, do their business, uh, go on their pilgrimages, uh, etc, etc. The other great accomplishment of Mongolians was that actual unification of the Silk Road. Um, <clears throat> under the uh, Mongolians, the trade of the Silk Road flourished. and. The two major aspects that uh, you need to take away from that is that number one, European um, access to the luxury items of Asia uh, were uh, much easier to get to and cultivated that desire for those luxury items, which eventually would lead to the age of exploration in a couple of centuries. The second takeaway is that the Silk Road not only allowed trade to flourish, but it also allowed for the exchange of religious and intellectual ideas, which is why we have um, Chinese and Coptic or Egyptian Christians, as well as Arabic Buddhists, and um, the exchange of disease, which was the major thoroughfare, the Silk Road was the major thoroughfare along which the Black Plague was able to reach Europe. We hope you found this free teacher's test prep sample video helpful. For more videos like this one covering all the subject matter and strategy you need to pass your exam, visit us today at www.teacherstestprep.com.